jungle in Shanghai is buzzing with brokers eager to get their wealthiest clients to sign on to the latest investment scheme in China. At this brokerage, Jiang Bo is getting the hard sell on the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect, a new program allowing people here to invest directly in Hong Kong, the first time they can trade outside the mainland Chinese markets. The IT manager is shown the VIP rooms, where he can check quotes of his stock picks and get investment advice from the staff. I think investing through the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect is a smart move. There will be more capital flow, so the outlook is positive. Down the hall, Professor Huang Song is opening an account too. The 32-year-old owns property, but he sees Hong Kong stocks as a welcome option for investors like him. I feel investments in China are opening up, and this gives me more choice, so I'm very happy. Bank of China manager and longtime Shanghai resident Jiang Li Cheng is pleased about the investor demand for other reasons. We hope Shanghai in the near future can become an international financial center. The government has had grand hopes to restore this once thriving center of international finance to its former glory. However, those efforts, including a much-hyped free trade zone, have stalled due to China's capital controls and poor regulation. The Connect is part of a broader agenda by Beijing to reform the Chinese financial sector. It's a small scheme now, but the hope is that it will expand, so Shanghai will open to the world and join the 24-7 frenzy of global finance. The Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect is very positive for the development of Shanghai. The program adds more investment products and plays a huge role in inbound and outbound investment flows. As an active example of China's opening up and reforms, Shanghai holds a special position. Its potential could surpass that of Hong Kong. If you look at these types of screens over here, this is what, it's what we called EMS, which is Execution Monitoring System. So we had to, for the Connect, we had to redesign that. Okay, okay, okay. At brokerage CLSA in Hong Kong, veteran trader Andy Maynard says the Connect is good for this city too. Foreign investors trust Hong Kong. Hong Kong adds credibility to China. Hong Kong adds, you know, um, a, a rule of law, a, a rule of engagement, high corporate governance. And it, at the moment, because China is still very much an emerging market, you know, but in definition, it gives that credibility to Chinese firms. Maynard says now more than ever, Hong Kong is a connection point between the global business community and China's financial markets. If you look at Chinese markets in totality, really, they play number two in the global in the global sort of makeup. You know, just behind the U.S. markets, which are in aggregate. So, the scope and the potential of the connect and what it leads to in the future could be that it could be bigger than Europe. It could be bigger than the U.S. So, Norman will be one of the one of the, the guys that will be actually trading on the connect um, and the systems that he's got here. Wow. You know, he's one of the traders that does the arbitrage activity between the markets for us right now. So, so Norm, Norm's unfortunately is in the, in the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Do comes. you feel ready? Ready. <laughs> But as Shanghai develops and gains experience with the West, Hong Kong could risk losing its edge. You could argue that Shanghai is going to take, you know, a lot of knowledge out, but then you could be very proud of the fact that the Hong Kong-based financial industry is the people that export that knowledge and we have China to become more global in terms of its outlook about how capital markets work. They've come down less there and obviously Queens Road Central. On the streets below, many people worry Hong Kong could cede its advantage to a rising China if its unique identity erodes. Longtime resident Paul Zimmerman has come out in support of the pro democracy protests, which he believes help Hong Kong maintain the distinctiveness that is a source of its prosperity.
As a local councillor here, Zimmerman held up a yellow umbrella, the symbol of the anti-government movement at an official National Day event. So why did you want to bring a yellow umbrella to the National Day event? Well, I, I wanted to make a silent uh, protest and uh, show my support for the kids out in the street. This is the main area, this is where the tear gas was, this is where the pepper spray was, this is where the big fight was, and that's why they've called it Umbrella Plaza. And this is the main area for protest. Uh, this is now turned into a tent camp where people kind of like sleep overnight. These are the umbrella covers, so after the struggle with the tear gas and so on, there was a lot of broken umbrellas here, and the kids went cleaning up. So they kind of gathered them all together. They took the plastic bits off, they took the metal bits off, and they took the covers off. And then some artists came around, they kind of put all the covers together. I don't think there is any lack of creativity in Hong Kong for what you see here. What do you say to people who um, say, oh, the protests are, are really bad for Hong Kong and they're not good for, for uh, wealthy people here, they're not good for for the reputation of the city? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, there's a confusing period, so people are a little bit worried, but ultimately what you see here is the growing up of a very outspoken generation that is going to be creative, that's going to have leadership skills, that have thought about really important issues of how to run the city, and they're then going to be your future leaders. I, I think Hong Kong should be grateful that this has happened because this is going to run the city in the future, and that's so it's, it's looking good. What it does, it reinforces Hong Kong as a free-spirited market, uh, as a market of creativity, of talented people. People are willing to speak their minds, where transactions can be done quickly because everybody speaks their mind quickly, everybody is outspoken and has freedom of speech. And that is going to be much more helpful when you do transactions. I mean, that's what people are used to in London and New York. That's what they get in, in Hong Kong. There is nothing under the table, it's on the table, everybody will speak their mind, and I think that's very healthy. I think ultimately it's gonna help Hong Kong to be more robust in ability to maintain its rule of law. So I think it's gonna help Hong Kong to, be, to maintain its unique role within Asia, within China as a center of business and finance. As, as long as Shanghai doesn't have the freedoms and doesn't have the rule of law that we have in Hong Kong, Hong Kong will be able to capture the market and Shanghai won't be able to take it.